My vision in 10 years is to come from one level of a farmer to another. Right now, I only have five trees, but in 10 years, I want to be someone who can sell tons and tons of them, both on local and international market. I want to be a game changer in this field and someone whom all other farmers look up to. I want to be able to make seeds and export them with the help of other few professionals. In 10 years, I'll be one of the biggest names in agriculture. Thank you a lot for choosing to watch Chizuzo TV today and thank you for choosing to educate yourself with me today. Today we are in Kayanza district, Rukara sector. We are visiting one of the young people who has established himself in the farming career. I want to thank our partners, Purdue University and Sobo, Scientific Animation Without Borders. They are the ones who make this possible. They fund us and help our cause, which is spreading awareness about agriculture and livestock and helping Rwandans create jobs in the farming field. We encourage other organizations and NGOs that are in this field to work with us too. We want to show other young people that it, it is possible to make money in agriculture. So fear not and let us hear how he did it. We thank people who listen to us and put in practice what they learned, like investors who invest in agriculture, making money for themselves, and creating jobs for people in the rural areas. We thank people who watch us from other countries. Before, you didn't understand what we say because we did all our videos in Kenyaranda, but as you can see, we have started putting them in English to accommodate you. Our main goal is to help Rwandans and Africans eradicate food insecurity by putting emphasis in agriculture as the main pillar that can help us achieve that. There are always conferences happening to talk about this problem of food insecurity, so we want to participate in eradicating it even if our contribution can be small. Our population raises each year and our land doesn't. So, to have enough food that can serve all our people, we need to be wise enough to farm our small land professionally and technologically. Thanks a lot. My name is Njenere Antoine. I am the CEO of Mugwaneza Farm Fresh. It is a company that is in agribusiness. We grow avocados and bananas, and we also do cattle rearing. My company is located in Eastern Province, Kayonza District, Lukara Sector, Imizi Village. As you can see, this is the plot for avocados where we prepare two different types of avocados, but they are both popular. Those types are namely Haas and Fuerte. These are the ones we prepare and make seedlings of them to sell to farmers who want to grow them. What made you start growing avocados? I grew up in a family of farmers who grew a lot of plants, including avocados. That I own, I did agriculture in, in school. But these weren't the main reasons why I started it. I once had an internship in Israel, and I was surprised to see that some people take a big plot just to grow avocados only. And I was so fascinated that I wanted to know everything there is to know about avocados, how they are prepared or germinated, how they are planted, how they are sold, how they are packaged. So I learned everything from them. And that is when I decided that I have to start doing it in Rwanda too with the dreams to make it big like those those farmers I learned from in Israel. How much capital did you start with? It would be really difficult to precise and say how much the capital was because there is land I bought after coming from Israel, there is land we had all along and there is the land we inherited from our parents. I met the siblings myself 
And then there is manure and other fertilizers we used. It is a lot. But to make it simple, I can say we started with 400 trees planted on one hectare of land and we had our own few cows that were giving us manure. There was a competition that was organized by UNDP and Minagri and fortunately my project won. They funded me with 9 million Rwandan francs and I used that money to broaden my activities, especially with the preparation of seedlings. Before, I only made what I wanted to plant only because the land was small. I also brought the water near where the seedlings are prepared because we needed it. And with the fertilizers too. The cows we had wasn't making enough fertilizers, so I invested in that too. We bought more land and more avocado trees. We have now six hectares in total, four that are for avocado plantation, and the two left, they have a lot of various activities in them. There is pasture plantation for the cows to feed on, there is the place where we, we germinate or prepare the seedlings, and then there, there are cow sheds. That is what we have right now, but the journey is still ongoing, and I believe we will achieve much more. Here you can see how, where we have the cow sheds. These cows help us get milk, both for selling and drinking, and also the manure we use in fertilizing the avocados. Four of them are milked, and others are just calves. This year we prepared 20,000 seedlings, but that, that is not the maximum amount we can prepare. We can do so much more, depending on the, the demand that is on market. So the availability of market is really high? Yeah, somehow I would say it is not a child's play, but as we know, most of the times the quality of one's product speak for itself. There are still challenge in marketing though. We are located very far and only a few people know about us. But it's getting better each year. Our clients spread the word each year and we get more customers that way. We all know Kayonza is popular for kato rearing, but I've heard there is a government program that is called Three Trees Per Household. Do you think it's put in practice around here? Yeah, a lot. I was really surprised when I started preparing the seedlings and my neighbors became my first customers. I know I was looking for a large scale buyer back then, but I was so excited that my neighbors were supportive and I was making a contribution in that government program. They know it is in their own benefit Sometimes there is even more demand than I can supply. Like last year, they told me to prepare Grevelia seedlings. They sold out faster. The citizen here understand the program very well. I started alone, but now I have three more partners, so we are four. They have helped me burden our activities. Has Avocado is very popular on international level, but it is slowly becoming popular in Rwanda too. Its demand here goes up as time goes by, and that gives me hope that one day the market will be there consistently. The Fuelta type is more popular here in Rwanda since people buy it mostly because of the products it can be made into, like cooking oil, hair refreshments, lotions, and so on. When I started, I got into avocado growing mostly because I had a deep knowledge about it and it is also because it was selling. Nowadays, to get in agribusiness just like in any other business, you need to make a plan and see that if what you're going to plant is needed on the market. The avocados were high in demand, so I planted them both in quality and quantity. And that makes you best at what you do and your customers, it makes them very, very satisfied. How much do you sell one seedling? 
if someone was buying from afar, is there a way would you package and deliver the seedlings to them? How much would you charge that? That is really simple, we already do it. Some people call us from all over the country, like from Rusizi for example. And depending on how many they want, we get a delivery car or a bike. And when the payment process is successful, they get what they ordered way faster. I usually sell one seedling on 1,000 Ronan francs, and that is both in person or ordering from somewhere far. The addition for someone who wants theirs delivered, I find drivers for them and they negotiate the transport fee depending on where the person lives. You can put on a constant transportation fee when people are ordering from different places. And in that way, it helps both you and the customer get what you want. This plot you're seeing here is one I told you we started with. These trees have given the first harvest already. We are harvesting for the second time. This tree you're seeing is of the Haas type. It is known to be unique because its outer cover has a bumpy skin. But despite that, it is very good and very delicious avocado. But its weight, according to the exporter's standard, is still somehow low. There is also fuel day. I will show you and tell you the difference between these two. And sometimes we modify their DNAs mostly for the house avocado because you want to raise its weight to the standard weight the exporters want. This you see here is a Fuelte avocado tree. As you can differentiate them from their skin and how big they are in terms of weight. So we modify the house's DNA so as to make it reach the standard weight that is needed on international market. This planting season has started and the activities we need to complete in this period can be done by anyone, women, youth or men. For the youth, mostly they work in the banana plantation, mulching avocados and putting fertilizers on them. We have both permanent employees and others we employ when we have more to be completed. The permanent ones are eight and the others can vary according to how much work there is. When there is too much work, they can even reach 30 or 50. When you plant a tree, you ensure that you're conserving the environment, especially at a place like this, which is near a liver. That liver is the biggest liver in Kayonza. It feeds water to the major pipes in Kayonza and other different sectors. So planting trees here reduces soil il erosion and amount of eroded content that was carried by the rain into that liver. So this is not only for our own income, we are also conserving the environment. <laughs> The challenges we face mostly are about how to do better and what we already do. Like in germination, there are some instruments we need but we don't have or about the seasons, how they change all the time. But no matter what the challenges are, you have to fight them and do better every day. The other challenge we face is about irrigating in sunny seasons but that has been somehow solved by now because we brought the water near. The other one is about greenhouses. I need to change them each season because of the type of soil we have here. If I use this greenhouse in preparing seedlings more than one season, I would risk delivering bad seedlings for the next season. <laughs> The market we have right now is from the people we have contracts with, and they are increasing as each day goes by. 
And when you also ask Nayeb, they connect you with lists of exporters and you choose the ones to work with. But we also sell with Rwandans because after all, you have to start at home before you go outside. So I encourage people to invest in avocados because it is one of the plants that give back good profit on both local and international market. My vision in 10 years is to come from one level of a farmer to another. Right now, I'm only growing five trees, but in 10 years, I want to be someone who sells tons and tons of trees both on local and international market. I want to be a game changer in this field and someone whom all the farmers look up to. I want to be able to make seeds and export them with the help of other few professionals. In 10 years, I'll be the biggest name in agriculture. We have social medias, especially WhatsApp. The number is 7 4166 you can even call us on that number. We have a Twitter account, Facebook page, an Instagram account. We use Mugwaneza Farm Fresh Limited as our username on all of them. Thank you so much for accepting to talk to us, inspiring and encouraging young people to join agriculture. You really taught us a lot in this conversation. So, the contribution of you watching this is putting in practice what you learned today and sharing it to many people as possible. It uses a TV, the voice of agriculture and livestock.